<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. Well, we were talking about everybody that like came up in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, yeah. the 90s, everyone before social media, the yeah. wild lives that yeah. they led. You can't do that anymore. You can't do it. And what, and what this conversation came for, for all y'all just, you know, tuning in, we were talking about like, you know, Chris Brown, I'll see Chris Brown, he'll come out my house and he'll 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 just sit there and go like, what the fuck, you know? And I said, listen, you're just too talented for for one. Cats like him and Justin Bieber who've been who've been blessed with extra. They look good. They can fight. They they're athletic and they sing. They can dance. They can dance. I, the first time I met Chris Brown, this is crazy. I'm throwing a party in Miami. And it's me and Colin Farrell. Eddie Murphy, you know, Eddie Murphy was still in it. This is years back, you know, like two, 2005, maybe, I think. Yeah, 2005. And uh, so I'm hosting a party. We're in Miami. The crowd's going crazy. But in the down, like not in the VIP, is some kids dancing. I'm like, who the fuck is that? And they're dancing, you know, and all this shit. And so my DJ, DJ Ari, goes, yo, man, that's a new kid, Chris Brown. Yo, he about to be the next one. I said, yeah, but he think he can dance because, you know, I know how to dance. Yeah. <laughs> I go fuck him up. You know what I'm saying? This young motherfucker don't know who I am. I come down and fuck him up. And it was like, Fox, okay. Yeah. So I go down. Now, now, you know, it's sort of my time. And so everybody's following me. I'm about to go battle whoever this kid is. So I said, yeah, bro, you think you can dance, huh? And I did like some kind of bullshit pop like a move. <laughs> Listen to me. We're all, we're all jammed together, right? He doesn't do a move. You know what he does? He does a backflip. But the way he did the backflip, and he's 6'2", he's standing in the middle of the crowd. He jumped over the crowd, did the backflip up here, and came straight down and said, what's up? I said, motherfucker, I'm going to leave you the fuck alone. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that. That's some Avenger shit. <laughs> and I just remember going, I said, that dude, when he get on, and then, you know, he gets on, but then social media catches on. Yeah. And then it's, it's just hard. It's hard. It's it's hard to live uh, when you're living when you're social media. And I tell them all the time: you have to social media sort of makes you color inside the lines. Yeah, or try to, or try to. Yeah, or or like this: it makes you tuck your artistry in sometimes. A little does bit. That, does that make sense? Tuck your crazy in. Tuck your crazy in. You tuck your artistry in. Like I didn't know what a meme was. And, you know, I'm you know I'm you know <laughs> shit. I'm a fucking. I was just catching on the MySpace and shit, shit shifted. <laughs> So my, my daughter sends me a picture of Rihanna, right, going to the Met Ball. And by the time I got the picture, whatever happened, the picture was Rihanna and in and, and this yellow dress. And I, I hit my daughter. I said, I love the dress. It's amazing. I don't understand the pizza that's in it. But, man, you know, maybe that's, uh, 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 you know, she's giving a nod to Italy and where maybe she got the dress from. And <laughs> she's like, no, Dad, that's a meme. I said, what? That's a meme. I said, what do you mean? She said, no, there's actually not a pizza in the dress. Somebody crafted or fixed it the, there. Look they made it look like it's pizza yeah. because it, oh, cause it's trailing behind her. And so me, I'm thinking, well, what the fuck is a meme? She says, no, that, that's what they do. I said, so this girl worked her whole fucking night to get this dress to go to the Met Ball, which is you're supposed to be, you know, out the box. And somebody puts a pizza on it, and that's all you see is a pizza. I said, how do you compete with that? How, how can you be Michael Jordan? And kids run up to you and say, you're the crybaby face. <laughs> <laughs> you cry man. They're going to cry man. I said, man well, I memes a... are like the best thing on the internet. It's one of the best things about the internet it's is the people be being able to make funny. It's the best thing, but watch this, though. It, once it sticks... That's what I'm saying. Once right. it sticks, oh, once like, it oh. sticks, it yeah, sticks. Yeah, I mean, Michael yeah. Jordan, to somebody under the age of 18, he the crybaby face, yeah. man. <laughs> hey, man, they go to the crybaby face. Hey, man, and then you know how uh, uh, you know how fans do it. Hey, man, cry right quick, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get you crying, my mother. <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Yeah, man, it's so it's, tough. Well, it's, we were talking about fun. John Jones. Yeah. And how John Jones is fighting this weekend about yeah. John Jones is a wild motherfucker. Yeah. And that's why he's the greatest light heavyweight of all time. Because that's, he's so, it's part of what you he have, is. You have to have it. We were talking about go, go, being with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, back in the day, you couldn't, that's why when people say, like, why does Mike Tyson, first of all, he's a fighter. He's not a tennis player. But Mike was a wild boy. And to hang out with him, you could understand like he was the biggest person on the planet 
and he had the demons. You know what I'm saying? And but he's fun too, because because you see him in a club and he sees he sees some girls and he be like, "Hi, how you doing? <laughs> you like BMWs?" The girls be like, "What? Do you like you like BMW? You like cars? You like BMWs?" And crazy, he'd take the girls out and go get a BMW. I mean, he was that crazy. You know wow. what I'm saying? Just you know, come on, come on, let's look at the BMW. And we open up the BMW dealership. And, but he was wild. But I say, just like how we were saying off here, you can't have that type of talent in that area and not have the jo- crazy. John, John Jones can't you, you, you can't you can't drink milk and and almost kill somebody <laughs> you know what I'm saying you can't yo let me get that homogenized I'm about to go no you can't yeah there's yeah. gotta be something about you that's out of control impulsive yeah. wild dangerous and that's what makes him so great everybody you even talked about you look at the people on your wall you look at Hendrix you look at Elvis they have to have something because that's God fucking with us yeah God's gonna give you something incredible but he's also going to give you something to anchor that. Because I believe, this is what I believe in. And you tell me if you believe this. I believe in the yin and the yang of everything. Meaning like when there's absolute light, there has to be absolute darkness to balance it out. And that's what everything that we do. It's sort of like we're not going to get away with anything. Like anything that happens to you in life, you have to pay for it. Like I, I, It's like the grocery store. Okay, I got the career. Boop, got to pay for that. Okay, I got the money. Boop. Okay, I gotta pay for that. Then here come the family. Boop. Yeah, I need that money. <coughs> yeah, you 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 fuck with me. I'm going I'm going I'm I'm gonna release, release a story about you. So it's all of these different things that you gotta pay for, and that's why you see these guys like that. Cause you know, like I said, talking to Justin Bieber, you know, with everything I said, some of this shit is supposed to happen to you. It has to. You can't otherwise. The think of the success that that kid's had at 20 years yeah. old. It's impossible. I was just reading some shit about him canceling his tour. Yeah. Cause he just said too much work. I mean, he's just going crazy, I guess, but yeah. he's made $93 million this year. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> he's t- fucking 20. And yeah, and for us, we like, shit. Because, <laughs> you know, I ain't 20. I'm like, motherfucker, I'm going to take that 90 million. I'm going to go do a million. But we can't be in his mind and we can't see how it is. He grew up that way. He grew up that way. Never had a normal life. And you don't expect. Like, I, I, like, I always tell kids who want to be in this business to please wait. Like even with my kids, I said, just wait, wait till you like, wait till you can understand. Like I was able to be grown and and have some grown shit happen to me, and just regular life shit happen. So that when this happened, I still have a point of reference to get back to, because you know, like I know, you've interviewed everybody. This business affects you in such a way, where you'll see one person one day. I won't say the comedian's name, but I remember a comedian back in the day did like half of an HBO whatever. And then the next week I saw him, he had 12 bodyguards. And they were pushing me back. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? Man? Man, yo, man, yo. No, not right now. You just got crazy. got crazy. And they so, get crazy. They get crazy. Cause, <laughs> and I've seen, I remember, I'll, I won't say the names, but there have been a couple of guys. i never get this one dude hit. And I went up to try to say something to him. And, and for some reason, he had a white suit on. <laughs> and we were in a club. Like, why the fuck does he have this white suit on and these big shades? And I went to talk to him, and he said, "Not right now, man. I'm rich." Mm. He said that. That's what he told me <laughs> in front of everybody. Not right now. They got rich. Goddamn. <laughs> Just let me be rich and famous right now. I don't want to hear your pitch because I was gonna pitch him something. I said, "Man, you think uh, you could get away?" And I was like, "That's wow. hilarious." And as he said it, I had to sort of like, okay, <clears throat> I had to get up. But that's, you know, that's what happens. When but you got to be careful. That tide goes in and it goes out and yeah. people come up and they remember, yeah. they remember, and they remember and, when you fucked with them. And we've, see, and we've seen them. We've seen them. But, but being a comedian, we get, we get a chance to sit in a different seat because we sort of, our, our jobs are, are, are observational, it, it, you know what I'm saying? We still all have our own demons, but it's, it's just different. When you, you also get them. humbled a lot as a comedian. Yeah. You got to get those jokes. You're performing in front of a live audience. Yeah. It's all live. Yeah. It's got to work. And if it doesn't work, shit, you got to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. And it's you got to assess. Yeah. Yeah. Actors don't get a lot of that. That's one of the reasons why they're kind of shaky. Yeah. More shaky. Yeah, they right? They don't get a lot of like that testing it live in front of people, that humility that comes with that. You don't. And, and, it's, and it's tough. I was talking to an actor, another actor. And it's tough because, see, I'm a comic who became an actor. So I'm cheating. You know what I'm saying? I can go do this, and I can go. I'm I'm gonna be, I'm be in St. Louis tomorrow. You know, doing right. some jokes, so I can. You know, I gotta. I can get my thing off, but just actors, it, it's tough. <laughs>